I got early access to the newest color film being made and we put it through all of its paces to see what kind of results we can get. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. What is good? Welcome back to the channel. We are talking about this today. And this is Wolfen 500, a new color film by Orwell. Orwell's a German based company and they've been involved in the film game for a very long time. The exciting news is that they're creating this product right here from scratch. This film that I got right here, this is actually a test roll that was sent to me ahead of the shipping of the official purchased rolls. But this film that you see right here was manufactured earlier this year. And that's amazing because film manufacturing for color is kind of a lost art. It's a dying art, you could even say. But the good news is there's a couple companies out there that are actually creating new film. If you check the video link up above here, you'll see Adox's video about the film they're creating. And this right here is by Orwell. So let's talk about this film a little bit before we look at sample images. This film is actually a motion picture film. Um, that might bring up some ideas in your head because motion picture films are already made by Kodak. These are not the exact same product. These are definitely different products. And for example, this doesn't have a Remjet layer, that anti-halation layer that is found on the motion picture film that Kodak has. So this product is actually being created explicitly for the motion picture market, but this was made available to still shooters like you and I for the sake of shooting in 35 millimeter cameras. Um, right now it's a limited release, but we'll see how this evolves over time, given that this is primarily intended for the motion picture market. Another key thing to note about this film is that this is intended to be developed in C41. This is not a cross-processed film. So the images that I got were developed in C41 appropriately. Unlike if you had Vision 3 film, which is the other motion picture film, that is intended to be processed in ECN2 developing. Um, which is not C41. So technically when you develop that in C41 at a lab or at home, that's cross process. But again, for this film, the intended process is C41 and that's what it was designed for. Additionally, this is a true ISO 500 film according to Orwell. So you expose this in your camera at 500 and you know, maybe you can overexpose it a little bit if you desire, but you definitely don't wanna underexpose it beyond that. For the sake of testing, I did two different things. The first thing is I shot a roll entirely myself in natural light which was mostly indoor, but also some outdoor stuff. And I developed that myself at home with my C41 kit. The second role that I got from Orwell, I actually did something similar, but um, I got it developed at a lab. And the reason I did this is because I wanted to compare the lab process and their scanner software and their scanner equipment against my scanning process, which is scanning with a digital camera and using negative lab pro to convert my negatives into positives. So you're gonna see two different sets of images. Let's go ahead and check these out. So overall, this was a very interesting experience. First and foremost, I wanna thank Oro for sending this to me because I'm glad that I got to test this out. So my thoughts are as follows. I think in terms of color and contrast, I think that's where you see the key things about this film. Color wise, I don't think this film is very saturated. Certain colors do stand out. For example, the blues, I feel like those are the ones that pop a bit more than the rest. But in general, I feel like this film is a bit more muted in terms of how vibrant colors are. Uh, obviously it is a colored film. This is not like, other kinds of films where the colors are wildly different, but this film has a definite look to it. And again, I shot most of these images in overcast light or indoors with window light. So that might be playing a role in the colors that I got. In terms of contrast, I think the C41 process here delivers very contrasty negatives. Uh, it's evident kind of all across the board. You see the difference between your highlights and your shadows is quite stark. And even in areas that are more evenly lit, you still see a lot of contrast. So I think it's cool to have something that has such a strong look baked into it, but this might not be for a lot of you people who prefer to have a bit more of a blank canvas when it comes to the look of your film, and then you can aggressively manipulate later on when in post, in Lightroom or Photoshop. Being that this is a ISO 500 film, I would expect this to have some visible grain. Um, and th this definitely does. Um, if you compare this to other kind of 400 speed, 500 speed films, I think the grain on this is a bit more evident and definitely more present. It's not very fine, it's a bit kind of slightly soft, but um, it's very apparent in terms of the look that the film gives you. So again, this is something that some people might not prefer because I know some people out there like to have very blank kind of pristine canvases that they can manipulate. This, there's a lot less of that. You can't remove grain, obviously. You can always add digital grain if that's your thing, but 
You can't remove grain that's there, especially if you're scanning in very high resolution. I was quite surprised, honestly, when I first developed these rolls. And for the role that I developed myself um, and scanned myself, uh, I saw the look and I thought maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I color converted incorrectly or Negative Lab Pro was kind of functioning a little bit strangely, but um, I was just surprised at how strong the look was on this film. Um, so I was glad to go send the second roll over to the lab to have them develop it and scan it. And honestly, the results are very similar. Uh, it was a different lighting situation for the photos that I took to the lab. Um, there was a bit more direct sun in those images, but even then, the images still had a bit of that kind of like slightly desaturated look, a little bit less vibrant, not super warm or anything like that. Um, so the look was consistent regardless of how I was developing these roles. Um, and developing is interesting because developing and scanning is, is how you get a look out of your film. It's a very intentional step. And I know a lot of people just pay to have it done, but all the choices made by whoever's developing and scanning make a massive difference. So I thought that potentially was at play here, but I managed to get very similar results uh, regardless of which path you choose for those two. I'm editing this video right now and I thought there was one thing that I forgot to mention and that has to do with the color of the film base. The film base color is quite important and that actually impacts the scans that you get whether you're using a digital camera or a lab scanner. So I just wanted to mention that this film is not the typical kind of RNG, dark brown, hint of red uh, film base that you would get on Kodak film, on Fuji film, on all the classic color films. Um, this is a bit more transparent and it leans more to the clear side with less of a cast. It does have a hint of a cast and I think it's kind of greenish in my opinion, but you know, that's a very subjective thing, but it's definitely not uh, anywhere close to what you would see on a Kodak film or on a Fuji film. So I wanted to mention that because that will determine how your scans end up. And if you don't account for that properly, or maybe even if you do, you may or may not be able to get very accurate looking colors um, when it comes to scanning the film. On the prints, I think, you know, you get the truest version of what the colors look like, but when you scan digitally, that's where you really kind of have to mess with the settings and, and quote unquote, edit a bit more to get something that looks correct. So of course, the absolute best way to test the colors and kind of the look of a film is to print it. Assuming it's C41 film, and that means um, it's technically optimized for the RR4 process when it comes to darkroom printing. So that's exactly what I did. Before we continue, let's talk about our sponsor for this video, Squarespace. So I actually just got up and running with my Squarespace site and it was quite painless. There's a couple of things I really like. First off are the blogging features. I really love how quick and easy it is to set up a blog and include photos, videos, links, all of the above. And I think every photographer should set up a blog so they can discuss their images, post them in high res, and just have a way to connect with their potential audience. I also really love the galleries on posts. You can basically upload a bunch of photos in sequence and have them pop up next to each other in a specific way. And you can click through and look at them. It's a really good technique for storytelling, especially with your images. Instead of just posting them one by one, you can put them together in a gallery so that they all have a common theme and interest. Lastly, I'm quite excited about the online stores. I haven't set this up yet, but I'm going to, and my hope here is to sell my prints. All photographers love selling prints, and this is a really cool way to do so in a very personalized, direct way. So make sure to head to Squarespace for a free trial. And if you use my link, squarespace.com slash ribsy, you get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So we have two prints here, um, and these are both from the role that I shot and developed myself. Uh, I like these more just because the images were a bit more intentional and I think showcase specific features of the film. So let's look at this print first. This print here is of my friend's hand um, over some records. And we went record shopping. He's a producer DJ, so thought it'd be fitting for a photo shoot. Either way, looking at this photo, um, what I'm looking at here are the colors. And there's a lot of different colors kind of scattered around where the records are. 
And again, that blue, that's the color that really sings to me immediately. Everything else seems to have a bit of a faded, kind of like slightly desaturated, maybe even pastel -y look. Um, and this print specifically might be slightly underexposed. Perhaps those colors get a bit stronger, but I think you'll see in the next photo that that's not really the case. But yeah, blues really sing here. And I'll show you a scan up here. This is of some other image from that day. Look at how aggressive that blue is and how beautiful and kind of full it looks compared to all the other colors. So yeah, I think blue for some reason is what really shines on this film. Um, whereas the other colors tend to lose a bit of their vibrance. Um, looking at this other print right here, this one in terms of exposure, I think is dead on. Pretty strong, kind of clean, even exposure. Very contrasty, as I said. And this was a relatively contrasty scene because we had basically the cloudy sky on one side and then a bunch of trees behind my subject, making that side a bit darker. Um, as you see here in the foreground, we've got more colors and that blue again, this is what sinks. That blue is what, I mean, it's obviously taking up a lot of the frame, but from a color saturation perspective, that's the only color that really pops to me in this image. We've got greens up here that are a bit muted. There's a little bit of orange out there that, you know, kind of has some life to it, but this green, for example, look at how muted this green is. I feel like it really lacks some of that deep saturation. So again, color-wise, like this film is not very saturated. And if you like blues and you're shooting images that have a lot of blue stuff like water, uh, I don't know what else is blue out there naturally, but the point is blue is the color that really seems to pop for me. But the RA4 process is a really good way to kind of benchmark all of your results because the RA4 process is a standard process. And as long as your temperature is spot on, which in this case it definitely was, um, then you can compare these results against any other film stock that's designed for RA4. Um, and I printed these in an official darkroom, which I'm now joining a couple different darkrooms here in Brooklyn where I live because my bathroom's not big enough to have my home darkroom anymore. The beauty of that is I get to use a standard processor, which is a machine that you feed paper in, and then it does the entire rest of the process for you. We're gonna talk about this more in a different video, but the good news is that these printing tests are going to be significantly more official now because everything in the process is very, very strongly controlled. Unlike before in the darkroom, at home in the bathroom in London, where you know I wasn't as kind of careful. I still got great results, but you couldn't officially compare everything kind of scientifically because the controls weren't very consistent. So I'm very curious to get the rolls that I actually bought from Orwell whenever those ship. I know they've had a couple delays. You can read about it in their blog. But um, yeah, I'm really curious to, to use those rolls uh, in strong sunlight. I wanna get that out there with direct overhead sun, maybe some golden hour sun with no clouds, just hitting a subject directly. Because my theory is that perhaps this film is really good at capturing the looks that you get via that hard light. Um, so far in cloudy situations, I haven't really preferred this look. I think this film kind of leaves you with something wanting to be desired when shooting in overcast or cloudy situations where you don't have strong light directly on your subject. But yeah, we'll see when we get those rolls and I'm very excited. I'm definitely gonna do a round two because I think this is a great start, but there's more to learn about this film. And overall, I'm just extremely happy that there's companies out there making more film. What Orwell's doing, is fantastic. And the more we can support them and other companies creating brand new color film, the better it's gonna be for all of us. This film isn't you know, very cheap right now and that's totally understandable given that they're getting started, but uh, theoretically with continued support and then scale in their process, we can get these prices to come down a bit and get a bit more stable and to get us more access to this film in a more easy way. Um, because right now this stuff isn't being sold in the US directly, I don't believe, but I could be wrong. All right, y'all, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm curious, have you looked at other photos um, and have you bought some of these rolls? What are kind of your plans for using these rolls? Let me know. All right, y'all, to the next video. I'm out.